I've been very critique about this series, despite me saying how much I'm looking forward to it, despite me saying how much I enjoy this series while reading it as manga. And a friend of mine asked me, well then you've creeped so much, why you seem to like it so much? Well that's the thing, sometimes you can really like something but yet still find the flaws in it. You know, you like something that's very bad, but you know that it's still good in its own way. That's how I feel. I think one of the main flaws of Reincarnated Sword is that it's the tropes that really holds it back from being very good, at least great. Right now, it's okay for a series for most people, but in all reality, it could be great if it always didn't have its tropes holding it back. And that's the problem with most of these isekais, hell, even most Japanese stories that you'll see in anime, manga, and light novels. A lot of times it's those tropes, those cliches that you see everywhere else where you feel like was it really necessary or the author just did because that's what everyone else does. And I guess that's the problem with most of these stories that I look forward to, you know. Like, I still enjoy Reincarnate Sword because I'm still reading it, so therefore it's still good. It's just that it does have those tropes, but later on things do get interesting, especially in the next arcs. They really um, heat up, things get crazy, and um, Fran really is put to the limit to the test. So right now I guess this is the beginner level stage, and I guess what gets some people on people's nerves, including mine, is really the fact that um, it's the easiness it goes through, you know. For instance, she walks in at a low level and she walks out at a high level. That happens in a dungeon, but you don't do it by yourself. If you walk into a dungeon overpowered and you still level up a lot, that's not how it really works. You know, if you're weak, go into a dungeon with a party, and you leave out the dungeon strong, but you do it with everybody else because you're not strong enough to face a dungeon by yourself. It makes no sense. That's how dungeon raids work. You know, you go in solo by yourself, already overpowered, beating everyone with ease, but you still come out as very, very strong. That means you're already powerful as it is. You're going, it's like you're like a high level, you're going to a level five dungeon, and you're being a ball of monsters because you're already higher level. So it wouldn't make any sense for you to level up very fast. That's the point of you being up on a higher level, is for you to feel like some sort of god among the creatures that you want to struggle against in the very beginning. Therefore, you have that payoff. But here, the payoff will feel like it because you're already overpowered when you just get in there already. You just become even more stronger by finding re weaker creatures, which makes no sense. And that's the problem with a lot of these kind of isekais that rely on the level up system. You know, you're supposed to be reincarnated into this other world where, you know, it's supposed to be another world, another reality. But it just feels like you're just into a video game because you have this thing, this narrator telling you about your level up skills. You have um, literally the level up system itself, which makes no sense. It's just supposed to be another world, another reality, but it just feels like another video game simulator altogether. It really makes no sense. A lot of authors like doing this for some reason, where I'm glad the most top tier easy copies don't do that, where they rely on a level up system in order for it to make sense, because it doesn't make any sense. Because how can you help your main character feel like it's a video game? If you have a level up system in your world, it makes no sense. <clears throat> so I'm already going off on a tangent here, but I still enjoy the episode. They used strategy to fight that the big threat demon after all. They defeated it, and um, but again that trope came in where it does that thing where even fairy tale did before, where it makes you think that something terrible is about to happen, but right before it happens, it's like oh, oh, oh I'm just kidding. Um, they're okay, you know. Fairy tale did that a lot after the island art. And and it's good every now and then, but if you keep doing it, it kinda of takes people off. It's saying you you using the same trick over and over again and no one's falling for it. For instance, after they defeat the greater demon, the sword, the teacher, feel like it was about to collapse. We all know the sword was gonna die, but at least lose consciousness and the guy has to be go repaired. The friend to be more careful and to be more, you know, something, to, something for her to grow at least. Like I said, this is the beginning level of a thing, but at least it's been great for her to learn something. She probably did, but I guess people were looking for that impact, that 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 sense of hit on her that make her like, okay, I kind of screwed up back there, and I got off by the skin of my teeth. I need to do better. 
but we don't get that. Instead, you know, going in by herself, having her arms cut off, and then the sword falling apart. Despite all that, it was just cleared up the next moment. She went in, she defeated things, she lost her arms, but they were quickly healed. Um, the sword got crumbled, but it repaired itself, thanks to the crystal. A lot of reasons, but still at the end of the day. Heck, even when the, the Greer Demon used skill to take her, it was still compromised for that as well. So no matter what happened, they always seemed to was sheltered through the writer's writing. And because of that, <clears throat> there was no true sense of danger. This back one gets a very powerful enemy. And I guess that did upset some people, myself included. You know, I knew they were undefeated, but at least show some sort of danger that they were up against something to make them learn from their decision. But it seems like there's no true consequence of their decisions, of their rash thinking, in a way. Like, let's just do what we want when we want. Consequences be damned. We probably won't get any consequences because the writer won't let us have consequences. Instead, if they do happen, they're quickly um, erased within a matter of minutes. Which, in my opinion, is just bad writing. Just Let's just do whatever we want, I guess. That's that kind of story. So anyway, she did get chewed out by the Guildmaster, but she is now on the same level as now. And of course, the well, the true guild head Guildmaster was questioning about the crystal, but she said it broke, but that's not the truth. So, like I said, I enjoy the series because it does get better from here on out. So I do remember there were some BS moments that did happen, but it does get better. I'm just hoping that where will it stop within this first season and will it have a season two to pick up from because it does get better. And I keep saying that only because it's true. It's like one of those shows like Talents Nana or Killing Bikes, where the first half is completely terrible or at least bearable to watch, but it does get better in the second half, but it never gets animated. <laughs> the second half never gets animated, which really, really sucks sometimes, man. You're like, come on, man. It, it, it gets good sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't. But that's just my opinion on the entire matter. But yeah, I'm still enjoying Reincarnate the Sword. Good, still good animation, and still um, some interesting, cool fights. But in, you'll, people will be surprised where Fran will go in her decision making. And remember, she's a girl who isn't very hesitant to kill. Another thing about I like to complain about is the bad guys. Sometimes bad guys are too dumbed down, you know. These are bad guys who've gotten away with so much over the years. But to lose to a kitty cat that's not that smart, let's be honest. And only because they're purposely willing to be dumbed down at that moment. Just for sake of the character to beat them. You know, uh, it's just not very good writing. You know, and I've been seeing it a lot over the years with a lot of um, writing. So, like I said before, you know, I mean crap on comics now these days to my friends. But I also tell them that... You know, there's a lot of bad writing, too, in Japanese literature when it comes to manga, light novels, and stuff. There's a lot of bad writing and a lot of, um, ass balls. <laughs> so, anyway, it's like that for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Did like, comment, subscribe, and, of course, hit that bell icon. This has the background on Saturday. Signing out.